Our God reigneth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My God reigns. Your God reigns. Hallelujah. Let's just worship him for that. Let's give him praise. Let's adore him. Let's glorify. Let's magnify him. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Let's just go into worship this morning. Let's just worship him wherever you are hearing me from. I want you to just worship him this morning. Let's worship him. 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 Come on, go ahead. Go ahead and worship him. Let's worship him in the beauty of his holiness this morning. Let's give him praise. Somebody join me. Let's give him praise. Yeah, let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Yeah, we, we worship you this morning. Wherever you can hear the sound of my voice, I just want you to go ahead and just give him praise this morning. I just feel like worshiping this morning. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Adonai, we worship you. Rose of Sharon, we worship you. Mighty warrior, we worship you. The great God, we worship you. Just let's worship him this morning. I just feel like worshiping this morning. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's worship him. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. We enthrone you, O God. Hallelujah. We magnify you, O God. Hallelujah. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just join me as we worship him. Let's join. Let's join to worship him this morning. Just go ahead. Open your heart and worship him. Let's give him worship this morning. Let's give him worship this morning. Let's give him worship this morning. He deserves our worship. He deserves our worship. He deserves our worship. Let's bow our heart before him. Let's adore him. Let's glorify him. Let's magnify him. Let's enthrone him again this morning. Hallelujah. The King of all kings, the Lord of all Lord. We ascribe all greatness to our God. We give you praise, O oh God. The lift of our head, the breasty one, the soon coming King, the never failing God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one that is without the beginning our shield, our shelter, our buckler, our redeemer, our savior, our deliverer. We give you praise this morning. We worship you. Some, somebody join me as we worship him. We worship you. The king of all kings, we bow our heart before you this morning. Thank you, precious God. Hallelujah. How our God reign. You reign in our home. You reign in our city. You reign in our nation. You reign in our ministry. You reign in our life. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Somebody join me. We give you praise this morning. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, the King of Kings. Thank you, internal rock of ages. Thank you, the rose of sorrow. Thank you, the lily of the valley. Thank you, the mighty warrior. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Our maker, we give you praise. Our deliverer, we give you praise. We enthrone you this morning. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. The God that is more than enough. We worship you this morning, our Father. Hallelujah. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. Thank you for restoration. We give you praise. 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 Waymaker, we give you praise. Life changer, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, everlasting Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us again this morning in the presence. I, I want to believe that you had a good night rest. The Lord bless you. The Lord uphold you. The Lord grant you your heart desire that you will not do this in vain. In the name of Jesus. Kindly spread the news to your friends, to your neighbor, to your relations this morning. Tell them that we are online so that they can join in the morning devotion. Because I know as they join, the Lord will do a new thing for them. And it will, it will, they will have a reason to testify to the goodness of God 
and to the mercy of God. So please tell people to join us this morning. Tell your friends, tell your neighbor, tell your family, everyone that you know, tell them to join us. And also always encourage them to switch on their notification so that anytime that we are on, it will be easy for them to connect with us. Amen. Also, I want to thank our worship team again this morning. I also want to say a big thank you to our media team. These two groups, they are working tirelessly. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. The Lord also give you great, great, great ideas to move forward and to do things in life in the name of Jesus. To everyone that always invite people to join on this platform, I say, God richly bless you. We appreciate you. Keep doing the good work. Don't stop. And God we, is the rewarder. We reward you and your household for your good work in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Father, we ask again this morning, just have your way in our midst. Do what we cannot do. Glorify your name in the name that is above every other name. Holy Spirit, lead us as we go in this service. Speak through me. And, oh, Lord, make yourself known. Reveal yourself to your people as they hear the sound of my voice again this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Let's go again. How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Let's go one more time. How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go quickly to the book of Numbers. Let's open our Bible to the book of Numbers. Numbers 20 and verse 12. I was saying part of this in the second service yesterday, but we're going to look at it again this morning. Numbers 20 and verse 12. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe in me to uphold me and as only in the eyes of the people of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. Mm. That is also solid again this morning. What did the Lord say there? He said, because you did not believe me to uphold me in the eyes of the people of Israel. So I want us to look at that this morning. At times, the reason why you may be stuck in the same position is unbelief. Did you, did you see that in the scripture this morning? The reason why you may be stuck in the same position is unbelief. Unbelief at times can keep you in the same position because you are not believing the word of God. At times without the capacity of God, without the ability of God, we don't trust God enough with our life. There are times that God is giving you divine instruction and you are thinking, well, I don't think it's possible. Well, I don't think it's going to happen. And that can get you stuck in the same position. That can make you to just be in the same circle and you are going through it again and again. I've come again this morning to encourage you. Unbelief is not what is not uh, something that you need as a child of God. You must believe in the word of God for you to go forward. At times, you see, the word of God, when you hear it, it looks as if, hmm, how is it going to happen? How is it possible? Can this really happen? Can this really? But when you hold on to it, because what, the, um, what God was saying concerning Moses and Aaron here, one of the reasons why they did not enter the promised land, God said, because you did not believe me, because you did not believe me to uphold me before the people, I gave you instruction, but you didn't believe me enough to show me to the people. Do you know, as you believe God, as you believe the word of God, as you hold on to the word of God, as you keep trusting the word of God, you give God, yes, the chance to be able to move on your behalf. You give God the power to be able to walk in your life. I was talking to somebody yesterday and I was just saying to them that uh, we, until we trust God enough with our life, God cannot do anything. And the person will say, hey, is it possible? I say, yes, until you trust God with your life, until you trust God with your situation, trusting God with your situation means you hand it over to him. You allow him to be God over your life. You don't begin to work it out that this is the way it's going to work out. This is the way it's going to work out. You see, when you give anything into God's end, you don't have plan B about it. That is, 
If you do it, that's it. If you does not do it, that's it. When you begin to have your plan B and you have your plan C, then it means you have not trusted God enough. Or when God is not speaking and you are saying God is speaking. You see, the world today is confused. The world today is in confused order because people have the itchy ear. They, are, they, are, they, they have the itchy ear. They want to say, uh, thus says the Lord, and everybody is speaking when God is not speaking. And when God is not speaking and you speak or you conclude, that is the voice of God, it keeps you in the same position. It keeps you going around the circle. And this is exactly what happened in the life of Moses. God said to Moses, because you did not believe me. So unbelief is something that we must try to do away with. What did I say this morning? Unbelief is something you must try to do away with. Do away with unbelief. Do away with unbelief. Uphold the word of God in the eyes of the people that are believers and unbelievers. Say, tongue says the word of God. This is the direction that God has given me. This is what the word of God says. I can't doubt the word of God. And all you need to do is to keep doubting your own doubt. What did I say? Doubt your own doubt. Believe the word of God. God says, because you have not opposed me before these people, you fail to oppose me before these people. The people he was speaking about was Israel. You fail to you fail to oppose me. He said, therefore, you shall not, I shall, you shall not bring the assembly into the land which I've given to you. So the land that God promised Israel that God has already spoken to Moses and Aaron, that this is where I'm taking my people. They could not enter their rest. What did I say? They could not enter their rest because of unbelief. It is my prayer today that you will enter your rest. You begin to believe God. Moses and Aaron, if you look at their life, they have walked. They really walk. They walk so well. They walk so well. Is it what happened when they were in Egypt in the presence of Pharaoh? that you want to talk about or you want to look back into? Or is it when they were going in the wilderness and the people of Israel one day and, and another, they, they rain a different kind of insult on them. They work so well. They work so well. There are people as well that they just believe in walking. They don't believe in the word of God. So they keep walking, they keep walking, they keep walking, but they don't believe in the word of God. Hallelujah. And because they do not believe in the work of God or in the word of God, they could not enter the promised land that God has promised to them. It's my prayer to everyone that is hearing you, hearing me this morning. You will enter into the promised land in the name of Jesus. I want you to look back again in the life of Moses. This is a story or this is a, a lesson for us as believers. you find out that going through the wilderness, the wilderness was not easy for them. There are days that there's no water. There's days that they, they, they didn't have food. There are days that, you know, things happen along the way that they could not even move on. They could not even go on. And every day is walk, 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 walk. One day or the other, the people drive them, you know, to the point that they have to go. They keep going back to the presence of God again and again and again and again. Uh, but they could not enter the arrest. It's my prayer today that you will enter the arrest in the name of Jesus. The scripture makes us to understand that they saw the land. They saw the land afar. God called Moses and he said, look at where you are going, but you are not going to enter there. Is there any one of us this morning that have received that kind of mind or word as a result of one thing or the other that you have done? And God has said, you will not enter your rest. Today, we plead the blood of Jesus to cancel such word over your life. And we pray that you will enter your rest in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, again in life, there are people that they walk and walk and they have nothing to show for it. There are people that they, acc all they can accumulate a certificate. The enemy has caused them not to enter their, their rest. They have degree. Remember yesterday I was saying that a lot of people, people that are meant to be professional, they are just in the village. 
people that are meant to be medical doctors, people that are meant to be professors, they are not where to be said. People that are meant to be a voice in the world, they are not a voice, they are just somewhere. They accumulate degrees and certificates, but their enemy at, at, at times, again, okay, does not allow them to be able to be fruitful and to, to use the certificates and the degrees that they have. But today, I've come to pray for you. Whatever God has given to you, the degree, the certificate, you will use it, you will go forward, your life will transform, and your life also will affect others in the name of Jesus. I say your life will affect others in the name of Jesus. Let's look at the life of Moses again and Aaron. They could not eat out of the reward of their labor. What did I say? They could not eat out, out of the reward of their labor. They work, 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 but there was no rest for them. There was no time for them to sit back and say, thank God, we have entered our rest. I pray for you today, you will enter your rest in the name of Jesus. You will eat out of your labor. Your labor will not be wasted in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's quickly look at the book of Hebrew 4 and verse 1 quickly. It said, therefore, while the promise of entering is rest still stand, let us fear lest any of you seems to have failed to reach it. Did you see that? There is a promise for us as children of God. God wants you to enter your rest. God does not want you to walk, walk, walk all the days of your life and there is no rest. God does not want you to labor, labor, labor all the days of your life and you don't have a day that you'll be able to sit back and you enjoy the reward of your labor. God does not want you to walk continuously over the life of your children and there's no time for you to sit back and begin to thank God for each and every one of your children. It is the will of God for you as a child of God that you'll be able to enter your rest concerning each and every one of your children. Can I pray for mothers and fathers this morning concerning your children, you will enter your rest. It's my prayer that you will enter your rest in the name of Jesus. It's my prayer that you will not fail in entering your rest. What did I say? You will not fail in entering your rest because some people at their old age, you find that they are still working for their children. They are still laboring for their children. When their children are supposed to be laboring for them, they are still the ones that are looking for how to pay, to pay school um, um, uh, rent. They are still the one looking for a way to make sure their children, you know, it may even be their grandchildren. They are looking for a way in order to help them. That will not be your own story. Your story will be at the age where you need to rest. Hear me and hear me, parents, this morning. There are days, there are years that you need to rest. There are days that you need to just enter your rest. You see, when we are talking about rest, it does not mean that you die. No, you enter your rest, you are still active. You will be in active service. That is, you are not working, but act, you are active, doing any, everything that you need to do as mothers, as father. But you will get to a point where your children will come and say to you, mommy, today, you are going to this place for rest. We are taking you, we have bought your ticket. We want you to go on cruise. We have bought your ticket. We want you to go to this uh, place on holiday for two weeks, for three weeks. You will not just be in the same position. You will be moving from one place to another. You will have, you know, your children will so much surround your table, according to the book of Psalm 128, that you will be so happy at the time when you need to see your grandchildren. You will not be crying before you see them. They will be around you and you will not get to the age that your grandchildren will be afraid of you. I've seen people that their grandchildren are afraid of them. They don't want to go near them. They don't want to, they don't even want to have anything to do with them. Entering your rest is when you can sit back and you can count your achievement. You can say, thank you, Jesus. And I want you to know, it's only in Christ that we have rest. What did I say? It is only in Christ that we have rest. Rest come from God. God give you rest. But that rest is as a result of you being in Christ. What did I say? Your rest is as a result of you being in Christ, where you can sit back, where you can relax, where you can see improvement in every areas of life. And you can say thank you, where you can get to, and you are not afraid to die because you know that you have really led your children to the position where you can sit back, 
where you can relax, where you are happy, where you can bless them, where you can call all your children. And you all will be saying to them, you'll be saying this, you are blessed, that you are blessed. May that give you that grace. It's grace that we need to covet, a grace that you enjoy, a grace that because of your children at your old age, you are not going back to work. But your children cannot look after you. You see that life is a season. When I say life is a season, let me say this to us. Some of us, we know it already. There is a point that you get to, you don't need to walk again. Your children are the one working for you. Your children are the one blessing you. Your children are the one that surrounds you. Your children, before you come and you finish coughing, they are standing and say, mommy, what is that? Daddy, what is that? What do you need? What can we do for you? And they are ready. Hey, they are not waiting for what you have worked for. But this time around, they also, they are worked and they are, in the, they are in the position now to look after you. You know, life is a season. There is a season when you look after your children. There is a season when you sit back and your children begin to look after you. I pray for you. May you enter that season of rest where you don't have to bother on any of your children, where you don't have to cry on any of your children, where you don't have to be thinking that, Father, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? But you enter your season of rest because you have work. And anyone that work in life, they must enter their season of rest. So this morning, I come to bless you as parents that you will enter your season of rest. By the time you are meant to be resting, you will not be working. You didn't get that. I say by the time you are meant to be working, uh, resting, you will not be working. By the time you are meant to be resting, that is not the time that you will be, be crying. That is not the time that you will be, think, you'll be thinking that, ha, ah, where are my children? I say your children will become your covering clothes. Do you know that's a prayer as well? That's a prayer that make one to go forward in life. You will not be abandoned by your children. This is a prayer that every woman should pray. This is a prayer that every father should pray. You will not be abandoned by your children. Hear me and hear me very well. In your night season, you need your children, not because you need anything around, uh, you need anything from them, because that's your time of rest. That's your time when they now should come around you. That is your ti the time now where they should, you know, they hug you more. They just make you feel relaxed. They just make you feel happy. The, anytime you see them, you know, they are comfort for you. I pray for you in your night time that your children will become a comfort for you. In your night time that your children will become your comfort covering clothes. You know what they call covering clothes? In your night time, that children will become your crown. In your night time, that your children will be the one to carry you and be around you. May you not be empty. Hey, enter your rest, knowing as surely that you have children around you. Your total dependence is not on people. What am I saying? Your total dependence is not on anybody. You know I have my children and that is enough for me. I pray for you today. May your children not die before your face. Hey, I say, may your children not die before your face. Ah, I say, may your children not die before your face. The time that you need to sit back and you are looking at your children and you are just praising God. You know, there is a time and a season of our life. We're talking about rest. Moses did not rest, um, enter rest. Hey, they didn't enter rest and they walked so much. Uh -huh. Meaning their life is in the same spot when it means to move. They looked at where they are going, but they could not reach it. It's my prayer for you this morning. Where you are going, you will reach it. Where you are going, you will not be stuck. Where you are going, something will not take you out of it. Certainly in the name of Jesus. May I pray this prayer again for you? You'll be able to lead your children to the place where they will have rest and you will have rest. Did you catch that? Let me pray that prayer again for you. I say you'll be able to lead your children to where they will have rest and you also will have rest. You know, that's a powerful prayer that I'm praying for you this morning. You will look at them and you have rest. They will look at you and they will have rest. Knowing fully where that mama is secure, papa is secure. There's no problem. They will not be carrying you from one place to another. That is rest. You will not be in the same position, stuck in the same position that they will be so upset and they'll be saying, ah, this mama is giving us trouble. This mama is giving us, ah, no, we don't think we know. That will not be your portion. I'm praying for you this morning. This morning devotion, that's what it takes and that's what I'm releasing over your life. You will not be in the same position, stuck in the same position. You will not be on bed and be pooing. You will not be on bed where you cannot 
don't move there, they won't move in you. And you become uh, and you become excess baggage to your children. I said, may that not be your portion. You have walked over your children. May the Lord grant you grace. I am praying for you. I am praying for you. I said, may the Lord grant you grace. The most important, beautiful thing about life. Can I say it to your, you this morning? The beautiful thing about life is when your children surround your table. My God, I said the beautiful thing about life when your children surround your table. The beautiful thing about life when your children become a blessing to you. The beautiful thing about life when you can look back and you can thank God for your children. Somebody said this, and I want to repeat it. Somebody they were asking. They said um, uh, it's only people that give back to children that you know that enters, and she laughed. It was the day of the big occasion in the life of this woman. And she laughed. And she said, listen, let me, can I say this to you? All the audience were looking and say, what does this woman mean? Her children, children, people that have children enter the arrest. And this woman said, no, it's not people that have children that have breasts. And people were looking at her. They are waiting for her to make her comment. And he said, what, he said this, he said, People that have children and their children were able to look after them, that is give back. May you get to the position that your children will be able to give back to you this morning. May I pray for you? Hey, may I pray for you? Your children will get to the point that they will give back to you. It will not be you just giving back, giving back, giving back. And everybody sat and they were looking at this woman and they said, what do you mean? He said, listen, when you have children and you have labor over, over those children, he said, you can have 20 children and at the end, your children don't turn back to look after you, then you don't have children. That's what it means. If you have 20 children and your children don't look back in order to give back, when it's more, they can give to you. When it's, um, it's much, they can give to you. You don't have children. And that's the honest truth. We must get to the place where we, give, we, give, we, we pray that our children will get to the point where they can look back and say, what would mommy need? When they go back out, they are saying, okay, let me buy this chicken. It's from little, little, you know, let me buy this chicken for mama. Let me buy these stocks for papa. Let me buy this cup for mama. And they are thinking about you. That's when you have children. When you have children and they are not thinking about you, and this is why you also as parents, you must walk, walk over those children so that they don't get to the place where they forget and abandon you. May you not be an abandoned father. May you not be an abandoned mother. I pray for you this morning. Somebody said many years ago, he said, this woman is an abandoned mother. May you, hey, what it means is, if you are, they call you an abandoned mother, meaning your children are forgotten you. Your children may not have that much. They may not be influential in society, but the best thing is that you get back to them, you were able to give to them and they are able to give back to you. That is when they say you have children. I pray for you this morning before we go and pray. I pray for you. May your children not call you abandoned mother. May you also not look at yourself and say now you are an abandoned mother. May your children care for you in little things, in greater things, in many things, in the name of Jesus. May God come through for you, that your children will be able to help you to enter your rest. May you also as parents, as individuals, not walk all the days of your life. Ah, you are still 70 and you are still going to be a gate man or looking for what to eat. You are still 75. You are still about walking about the street. You have not entered rest. That is what it means. I pray for you today. May the order of this morning, may the devotion of this morning change your life, that you will be able to eat out of the fruit of your labor. May the labor that you have labored for 24-7 not to be given to another in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, before I go and pray this morning, I had a story of a woman that she gave back to a child, but this child does not look after this woman. On the day of the wedding of this child, it was the auntie. The woman was seated, but she was not in the position of a mother. It was the sister of this woman that took the occasion and was leading the band, was doing everything. The mother was just there like sit down look. The mother was just there as, an, as an, um, a visitor. May you not be a visitor where you are meant to be resting. May you not be a visitor where you are meant to be, you know, to be shining. May you not be a visitor where they are calling the name of your children and you are not be able to stand and stand with them or, or they stand with you and you are, you know, you are looking back and you are saying thank you to Jesus. I pray for you this morning, your covering clothes. Can I say that again? Your covering clothes at your nighttime, at your afternoon time, 
at your morning time will not be removed from your life in the name of Jesus. The crown of your head that you are looking at suddenly will not be taken away from you. I pray for you this morning. You will enter your race. Ah, you didn't hear me. I said you will enter your race. Everyone connected to me this morning, everyone hearing me this morning, in the name of Jesus, there will not be reason for you to doubt God. There will not be reason for you to doubt the ability of God. There will not be reason for you to doubt the word of God. As you are hearing the word of God, you'll be able to uphold the word of God and uphold the word of faith in the presence of the uh, 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 of people. You will be able to tell people that my God is good. As you are looking at your children, there will not be reason for you one minute to cry. There will not be reason for you to regret that had I know, I wouldn't have given back to these children. That time you need your children. When is the time of rest? Can I pray for you again? The time when you need your children, when is the time of rest? May another not take your position this morning in the name of Jesus. May you not be stuck in the same position in your old age. May you be moving. Even at 90, there is still movement. Even at 90, you are still doing things. Even at 90, you are looking and we are saying, Father, we give you praise that you will not become a nuisance to your children in the name of Jesus. Let me have this one before we go and pray. May you not get to the place where you are waiting for your children before you'll be able to eat. Ah, can I pray for you again? You didn't hear me. May you not get to the point where all you have, your total dependence will have to be on your children. May that not be your portion in the name of Jesus. I pray for you this morning. You will leave inheritance for your children, children, children in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will grant you strength, even in your old age. Whatever is the sickness that comes with old age. I pray for you today. I'm speaking to you that I'm getting hold. I say, whatever is the sickness that comes with old age, may you not experience any of this sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. With great zeal this morning, I pray for you. With great faith this morning, I pray for you. May another not take your position. May another not sit on your seat. May another, ah, may another not ask you, where are your children? May another not ask you that you are empty. May you not be empty in your days of hold in the name of Jesus. Throughout the journey of life, may you not experience a day where you will look at yourself and you will say you are empty. May you not look at yourself and say, why did I give back to children? May you not ever regret bringing those children here to hurt in the mighty name of Jesus and in rounding up. May the Lord give you and grant you grace to enter your rest throughout the days of your life in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a resounding amen with me this morning. Amen. You will enter your rest. I want you to look at it again. You must enter your rest. You must enter your rest. Remember I said, there is a brother, he said at 50, he wants to sit back, relax. All he wants to do is just to be coaching the children. And that's exactly what he's doing. At 50, he's relaxing. At 50, he's just showing his children. This is where I have this business. That is where I have this business. This business is here. That business is here. And he's coaching them. Is coaching them to take the baton, meaning he has entered his rest. May you enter your rest in the name of Jesus. Enter your rest from today. May the Lord give you rest. Can I say it again? I say may God give you grace to enter rest in the name of Jesus. From today, you are entering your rest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Let's listen to our advert before we go again this morning to hear, uh, to read Psalm 48. Hallelujah. Before I go to pray, I want you to give you this nugget so that you hold it in your hand. The Holy Spirit just asked me to do that, and I'm going to do that quickly. 
in order for you to enter your rest, what are the things that you need to do? Number one, you must trust God. Trust God that your nighttime is settled. Number two, take him at his word. What did I say? Number one is trust God. Number two, take God as his word. Take God as his word. Hallelujah. Number three, be obedient. What did I say? Be obedient to the word of God. Whatever the word of God says, make sure you are obedient to it. Did you just hear me? Whatever the word of God says, don't be someone that does not obey the word of God. Whatever the word says to you, your pastor says to you, whatever you read in the word of God, whatever you read, be what? Be obedient to it. Number four, repent of any sin. At times, hear this. There are sins that is waiting for you at your night time. May that not be your portion. There are sins that you, you have committed in the, in the morning time and it's waiting for you at the night time. So if there's anything in your life that will not cause you to enter your rest, you do what? You repent. That's number four. You repent. You what? You repent. And finally, we must do, you must do your part to receive rest. What did I say? Do your part to receive rest. Did you hear that? Do your part to receive rest by showing diligence in everything that you do. I quickly run through it again. Uh -huh. Number one, trust God. Trust God at his word. What did I say? Trust God at his word. Number two, uh, the word of God, keep it in your heart. Number three, be obedient to the word of God. Number four, if there's any sin that you need to repent of, don't let anybody wind you or push you before you repent. Repent of whatever you need to repent. And finally, do your part to receive your rest. What did I say? Do your part to receive your rest. Show diligence in everything that you do and it will be well with you. Let's read the Psalm 48 this morning, quickly. Let's read the Psalm 48 this morning. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is joy of the whole earth. Mount Zion is the far north, the city of the greater king. Within a citadel, God has made himself known as the fortress. For behold, the king assembly, they came together. As soon as they saw it, they were astonished. They were, they were in panic. They took to their flight. Trembling took hold of them. Their anguish as of a woman in labor. The, by the east wind, you scatter the sheep of Tashish. As we have heard, so have we seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God will, which God establish forever. We have thought of your uh, steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple, as your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. You, your right hand is filled with righteousness. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because your judgment, because, because your judgment walk about Zion. Go around her. Number the towers. Consider well a rampart. Go through the citadel that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. He will guide us forever. Glory be to God the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to begin to thank God again this morning. Thank God because you are entering your rest. This word will cause you to do whatever you need to do, cause correction. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to thank God. I want you to thank God. I want you to thank God, thank God for life, thank God for grace, thank God for the word that you are hearing on this platform again and again every time. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to thank God. I want you to thank God. I want you to thank God. I want you to thank God for his mercy. I want you to thank God for his faithfulness. I want you to thank God for his loving kindness. I want you to thank God for what he has not even done in your life that you believe by faith. Remember, they did not enter their rest because they did not believe. I want you to thank God. Thank God for your vision board that everything you put down, that the Lord has done it, 
Aha, uh -huh. I want you to thank God, begin 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 to thank God, thank God for everything. Hallelujah. We give you praise. I want you to decree and declare again that no power will be able to stop you in the middle of the road. No power will be able to will, 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 will distract you in the middle of the road. Say, I'm not stopping at the middle of the road. Say, I'm going through. Say, I'm going through. Say, I'm going through. Say, I'm going through. From today, I'm going through. I'm going through, 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 I'm going through. I want you to decree and declare that again. Say, I'm going through, I will not stop at the middle of the road. I will not stop at the middle of the road. I have grace and anointing. 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 I'm going through, I'm going through, I'm going through, I'm going through. I want you to lift up your voice and make that decree. Say, I am going through. I am not stuck at the middle of the road. I am I'm not stuck at the middle of the road. I'm going through. 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 I want you to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, I will not stop halfway in my journey. I want you to say that. Say, I will not stop halfway in my journey. I will not stop halfway in my journey. My children will not stop halfway in their journey. My children will not stop halfway in their journey. I will not stop halfway in my journey. I want you to declare that we will not stop halfway in our journey. Whatever we are doing right now, we will finish it. We will finish well. Relationship, you will finish well. Career, you will finish well. Business, you will finish well. Say, so you will not stop halfway. I want you to say it. My children will not stop halfway. My children will not stop halfway in their career, in business, in their education. I want you to pray that way. Our children will not stop halfway. They will not stop halfway. They will not stop halfway. In relationship, you will not stop halfway. In dating, you will not stop halfway. I want you to say in business, you will not stop halfway. You will not stop halfway. Say, I will not stop halfway. Say, from today, I will not stop halfway. In relationship, I will not stop halfway. In my life, I will not stop halfway. In my career, I will not stop halfway. In ministry, I will not stop halfway. Moses, stop halfway. Say, I will not stop halfway. Say, I will hand well. I want you to say it. Say, I will hand well. I will hand well. From today, receive grace and anointing to hand well. I want you to receive the grace and anointing to hand well in your business, uh, you will hand well. I want you to say it. I will hand well from today. I will hand well. I will hand well in my career, in relationship, in marriage. Uh, I will hand well. I want you to say it again. I want you to say it again. I will hand well. I received that grace this morning. Grace to hand well. Grace to hand well. Grace to hand well. Grace to hand well. In whatever I do, I is business. I is my career. I is my, my relationship. I is ministry, say, I will hang well. I want you to say it. I will hang well. I will not stop up way. 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 I want you to decree and declare, is there any force of power in my father's house, in my mother's house, in my husband's house that does not make one to, to finish well? Say today, I cut off from it. 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 Say, is there any power, Lord, that is making arrangement for me not to finish well? Say, today, I break away from it. I break away from it. I break away from it. I want you to say it again. Say, I break away from it. Say, from today, I will hand well. I will start well. I will hand well. I will stand well. I will hand well. I will not be weary at the middle of the road. I will not be tired at the middle of the road. I will not be confused. I want you to say it. I will not be confused. I will end well. I will go forward. I will not be stuck in my journey. I want you to say it. My children will hand well. 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 I will hand well. I want you to decree it. I want you to decree it. I want you to decree it. I will not fail at the middle of the road. I will not falter at the middle of the road. I want you to decree and declare that I will not fail at the edge of breakthrough. I want you to say it. Say, I will not have. Uh, 
I will not fail at the edge of breakthrough. At the edge of breakthrough, I will not fail. At the edge of relationship, I will not fail. At the edge of my career or my business, I will not fail. I will not fail. I will not fail. I want you to say it again and again. I want you to say it again and again. Say, I will not fall at the edge of breakthrough. At the edge of my breakthrough, suddenly things will not go wrong again. Say, suddenly things will not go wrong again. At the middle of your relationship, when you are about to tie the knot, when you are about to receive, uh, yes, can you marry me? I will not fail again. 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 At the edge of my relationship, at the edge of my career, at the edge of my business, I will not fail. 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 I want you to decree and declare, I enter my rest in everything that I'm doing. I receive the spirit of rest. I receive it. The gift of rest, I receive. The gift of rest, I receive. I want you to say it again and again. I receive the gift of rest. 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 I receive the gift of rest over my children, in my marriage, over my ministry. I receive rest. I want you to say it. Receive Receive rest, receive rest. I want you to say it. Receive rest, receive rest, receive rest, receive rest. Over your children, receive rest. Over your career, receive rest. That child that you are worried, so worried about, I say, receive rest today. Receive rest today. Receive rest today. Say, I receive rest. 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 I want you to decree and declare, I will fulfill my destiny in season. You see, there is, somebody, there is something for someone to run and run in season and finish in season. I want you to say, it. I will fulfill my destiny in season. I will run in season. I will finish well. I will finish well. I will run in season. There are times that you need to run. If it's too late, there's nobody that is looking at you again. Say, I will run in season in the name of Jesus. I will finish in season. I will finish in season and I will finish well. I want you to say it. Each and every one of my children, they will run in season. They will finish well. Is there anything that entangles them on the road? I want you to begin to speak. Today is removed by the order of this devotion, by the order of this preaching. It's removed. Anything that entangles them on the way up, say it's removed. 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 I want you to decree and declare that the syndrome of halfway is out of my life today. The syndrome of halfway is out of my life today. The syndrome of halfway is out of my life today. I want you to declare that. The syndrome of halfway, the syndrome of halfway is out of the life of my children. Aha, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the syndrome of halfway, I want you to say it. The syndrome of halfway, the syndrome of never finish, the syndrome of starting and never finish, the syndrome of starting and never having a testimony, the syndrome of starting and never reaching the height is out of my life today. I want you to declare that it's out of my life today. That syndrome of halfway is out of my life. The syndrome of halfway, I want you to break that way. I want you to break that way. The syndrome of halfway, you start but you never finish. You start but you never end it. You start and you have I, along the way something go wrong. Say the go wrong. Say the syndrome of halfway. I'm out of it today. I want you to confess that. I want you to confess that. That's the key thing in our prayer today. Say the syndrome of halfway. I'm out of it today. The syndrome of halfway. I want you to pray at this time. I want you to open your mouth and begin to declare the syndrome of halfway. The syndrome of halfway. The syndrome of halfway. In each and every one of the life of my children, they are out of it today. 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 That syndrome of halfway. Papa, today, because of your name, we are out of it as a family. We are out of it as an individual. We are out of it. Bring out your anointing oil. That is the point of our prayer this morning. Say, I come out of the syndrome of halfway. I come out of the syndrome of halfway. I break that yoke today. I break that yoke today. I break that yoke today. Bring out your anointing and begin to anoint yourself and begin to speak. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. The syndrome of halfway. The syndrome of halfway. The syndrome of halfway. We are out of it today. I want you to speak. Open your daughter. Say the syndrome of halfway. You are out 
part of it today. The syndrome of halfway. Speak over your son. Say the speak syndrome of halfway. Begin to anoint yourself and say it. Say the syndrome of halfway. I am out of it today. I want you to major on that prayer point. I want you to major on that prayer point. I want you to major on that prayer point. The syndrome of halfway. That yoke is broken in your life today. That yoke is broken in your life today. Begin to confess and prophesy to your life. Prophesy to each and the life of the, uh, your children. Begin to speak to their life one by one. Say the syndrome of halfway. Say they are out of it today. The syndrome of halfway. I am out of it today. Either in relationship, in that in business, in whatever you are doing. Say by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. Say I'm out of the syndrome of halfway. I'm out of the syndrome of halfway. Anoint yourself. Declare that word. 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 You are not able to strike any deal. You go halfway and you can't strike a deal. Yes, you start work and you are changing. You are changing every time. Yes, you start relationship and you cannot finish it. Say today, by the power and the anointing of grace, that is what God is doing in your life. The syndrome of halfway. I'm out of it today. I'm out of it today. I'm out of it today. Prophesy to your life. Prophesy to your life. Prophesy to your life. Prophesy to your life. Throughout today, make sure you are praying that prayer. The syndrome of halfway. I am out of it today. The syndrome of halfway. I am out of it today. Lord, help me to enter my rest. Enter my rest. Enter my rest. Open your water. I'm about to bless your water. I'm about to bless your water. I want you to speak the same thing into your water. The syndrome of halfway. I am out of it. I am out of it. I am out of it. In relationship, I am out of it. Yes, in business, I am out of it. In my career, I am out of it. In education, I am out of it. Some people start, they keep starting, but they never finish. The syndrome of halfway. I want you to speak it into your water. As I'm drinking this water today, as I've anointed myself today, I part from the syndrome of halfway. I join my faith with you wherever you are hearing me again this morning by the power of the name of Jesus and the authority that has been given to me I join my faith with you in the name of Jesus I speak over your life in the name of Jesus the syndrome of halfway you are out today you are out today you are out today you are out today. You are out today. That syndrome that caused you to walk, 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 but there is no rest. I said you are out of it today. That syndrome that caused you to start relationship, you never get to marriage. That syndrome that caused you to start business, but you never have a place where you can say this is the business I'm doing. That syndrome that is halfway and you never struck any deal. Today, by the power and the name of Jesus, you are out of it. I release grace over you. 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 In the name of Jesus, that sister, come out of it. That brother, come out of it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come out of it. Come out of it. That syndrome of halfway. By the power of the blood of Jesus, you started the building, you never finish it. It's half, half, half in your life. You started the education, you never finish it. Today, you are delivered. By the power of the blood and the name of Jesus, you cross over, you cross over, you cross over by this auction that have released over your life. Today, you cross over barriers and difficulty, disappointment. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Whatever you start in life, you will finish well. In the name of Jesus, you will get to the point where you will enter your rest. No more limitation. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace from this morning. Proclaim it in the name of Jesus. Don't doubt the word of God. It is well with you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Remember, in the presence is every morning. I want you to start your day with prayer. I want you to start your day with something that will transform and change you and will fill your thought. Today, I want you to believe that the syndrome of halfway is out of your life. You are entering your rest by the power and the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Before we go again, I want you to give your offering. As you are giving, the Lord will bless you in every area of life. I want you to give your, give your offering. We have our account numbers on the screen. Give your offering, give your offering. And as you are giving, you will testify to the greatness of God in Jesus' name. This evening, we'll be having a Bible study 
Make sure you join our Bible study this evening. Join our Bible study this evening so that you can grow in the word of God for you also to obey the word of God. Stay put in grace to grace. Hold on to faith. Trust God for the word of God that is coming out every time and you will enjoy greater grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Until I come your way again, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. And I want you to believe in the word of God. Don't doubt the word of God. The syndrome of, uh, of half, halfway is broken in your life. Rejoice and be glad. And I will celebrate with you. I wait to hear your testimony. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name.